Look, I'm just going to hand over to you and bless you. Um, Lord, speak through him this morning. We thank you for this family, God, and we just thank you for what we're about to hear, God. And, and uh, God, we pray that we'll all be just blessed and each person in here will be given what they need this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for everything that's been done here. And I don't mean the, the, the busyness of this weekend. I mean, from so far back, as Neil mentioned, about when we first met Neil, Neil was Aaron's lift. I remember him, I recall him saying about how that day he was supposed to be busy, but meetings dropped out. And I know Neil is a very busy man. So to have time to come to Belfast to leave Aaron to be Aaron's chauffeur for the day was, <laughs> was interesting. But I, I'm just grateful for what God has done here. And I, we were just discussing there briefly with Michelle about what God is doing here. And I, I, I was going to mention it at some point, but I feel like I should mention now. I believe God is doing something special here. And we haven't came down here for no reason. From the first time we came here, we knew something special was here. To the point that when we were leaving to go home, we used to travel from Dundonald each night of the new life and then go home, drive home, back and forward. It was worth it for to do that, you know. And uh, there was because there was something here, God was building something and he will complete that which we started. God doesn't make mistakes and rub them out and start again. He has done this for a reason and I encourage you guys to keep going. Um, to hear, I know what division has been in the past and what ultimate goal for to build something here. I believe God will bring that to fruition. And, and I do think that it is, will be a change and a game changer for this entire land. I believe that. I do believe that because he just wants hungry hearts. And I can see that here, you know. Um, I don't want to retouch on what Gareth was saying last night, but when we were asked to do this originally, it was kind of like, well, we'll do the interview kind of thing. And then it was just, it's become this. But listen, it's, his will be done, you know. And I, I just want to share, I am not, a, I, I want to say I'm not, a, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a speaker, really. I'm a person who likes to just sit and talk to people about things. And I would like to think that it's just at ground, at ground level, which is kind of like I was discussing with Edith earlier about, you know, we like to worship at ground level too, but... I, I, what I got from what you said was it's an altar, we're raising ourselves up as a, we, we are on an altar as we worship the Lord, you know, giving a sacrifice of praise but I just want to start out by saying, as I said I'm not a speaker, so when I was coming together with this I really didn't know where to start um, what aspect to start with but what, I've, what I will start with <laughs> is Isaiah 43, 21 it says the people whom I have formed myself, that I might declare, that they might declare my praise, and that is that we were formed to declare the praise of God. People say, "What?" Is, so many people, and the question has been asked through eternity: What is our purpose? Why are we here? What, 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 what good are we even? Some people say, "What good am I?" God sees you as an instrument, as a vessel of praise for Him, and that can overflow to others. As, as you worship the Lord, people will watch you. And that's kind of what we've done over the years where no matter where we are, I, when we're worshiping, I want people to see, to feel free of the fear of man, to be able to worship, to not be constrained. Because most people are looking around thinking, what's such and such going to think? Or what are they doing? Or if I do this, it's a bit of a saying last night, kneel, lie down, pray. You know, all the worship gatherings we do, we encourage people to come as you are to do what you wish, <laughs> to join in. As I say, we just want people to join in when we're worshiping on whatever instrument they can and let the Lord bring it together. Um, I also want to just touch on Psalm 16. There was some, already been some quotes in our prayer time, even Phil <laughs> starting the meeting off, talking about the things that are so heavy with our hearts. And the Psalms obviously was written during the period that the Divanic, the Davidic tab, uh, tabernacle. Um, Psalm 16 says, you will show me the path of life. In your, right, in your presence is fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. You know, something we've come to experience in worship is that no matter how hard a time you've had, no matter how busy a day you've had, when you come in and enter into the presence of God, you do find rest, you do find peace. It is a, another realm, if you will. You enter into the realm of the Lord and into the kingdom worship. 
Uh, so I just want to go back to the start. So we were, Michelle and myself, we have two children. Um, Caitlin, who can't be here today, she's had to work, but she would usually come to New Life. She loves it too. Um, and Sapphire, who was singing this morning. Um, <laughs> yes, she's enjoying a name, a name drop. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we have the two children. But just before, um, and maybe I will go back, we, we got saved together. We gave our lives to the Lord in, 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 in my mom's bedroom, literally together. We'd been going out. I had grown, Michelle had grown up in the church in the Nall and the AOG it was. It was a very well-known church at the time. And uh, funnily enough, uh, something we discovered was uh, Michelle's granny used to bring her to Bonnie's caravan park every year. The, literally the whole summer she used to run off into the woods. I wish I had had that up as a child, you know, just to go and wild. I was doing that in East Belfast. It wasn't the same. It was a very different type of jungle. But... Uh, no, but so Michelle grew up here, but her granny brought her to these meetings in the Northfield every year. And Michelle and Neil are pretty much the same age. They would have been in the kids' tents and the kids' ministry, didn't you say, they'd done the worship, probably together, unbeknown to this. And then the other strange thing was, was that Sarah grew up around the corner from Michelle grew up in, in Dundonald and, and then Phil's just down the street. So it was kind of like, my goodness, it's, it's, it's powerful. But you no, know, we... we um, me and Michelle met at the ice bowl. We were talking about the ice bowl with, with these gay and stuff, you know. We used to, I used to speed skate and Michelle used to, <laughs> used to be there. But uh, So we, um, we got together. But the thing is, she grew up in the church. I went to the BB and stuff and went to youth clubs. But we had never, we had never in our three years, maybe four years, we'd been going out from a very young age. Michelle was only 19 when we got married, believe it or not. So... <laughs> we've been married 25 years this year but uh, we had never even discussed God we had, hadn't even came up in conversation we were doing the, the things that people did those days I was, I'll was i not give you my testimony right now it's, but you can probably imagine <laughs> NRE said them <laughs> you know so um, we were up to the usual things but literally my brother was a Christian he used to do outreach in Bangor uh, down outside the Boom Boom Rooms and all as it was then, all the clubs. And uh, he, they gave out tracks. And I don't know if you've ever seen the chick tracks. They're like wee cartoons. But there was literally one night I picked up, we picked up a chick track and we read it. And the conviction of God was so heavy upon us. And we literally both just gave our lives to the Lord then and there. It was just an immediate thing. It came from nowhere. And when we, actually, when we went down the stairs the next morning, I'd said to my mum, we're, we got saved last night and literally we got laughed at, literally laughed at. That's because they just couldn't believe it, you know. And it was like six weeks before people would believe us, you know. But, um, but it was one of those things, you know. It's, hey, God moves in his own way. But yeah, so from, from, an, from early on in our, our walk with the Lord, we literally got involved in stuff right away, youth meetings and stuff. And never had anyone to play the guitar. Michelle was like, I'm going to try and play the guitar. So she kind of, we got a wee cheap guitar and they say it's easier to learn on a good guitar because cheap guitars aren't, aren't great to tune. But she started getting into worship and we had a heart from worship from day one. Um, interestingly, again, when tie in with something Gareth said last night, we were, we were finding our way in, in, in worship, but we were, we'd come across, uh, Una knows Lorraine Waddell. Lorraine taught on biblical Hebrew the feasts and seasons, and we were actually hosting a talk in our house on these things. And Lorraine, I don't know if anyone knows Lorraine, I know Anna does know her very well, but uh, Lorraine would, would have went then to Jerusalem at least four times a year to the, the prayer towers and the, the worship centers. And because of her connections there, she had people sent her way. Now, Lorraine was doing the class in our house that night, and a woman showed up from nowhere, uh, from Alaska. Do you remember Faith and Kathy? Yeah, you know. So this girl Faith come and she told us how God had sent her to Jerusalem and Kathy was, uh, she actually came after, she wasn't even with her at the time. So they came to our house and Faith came and she said, God sent me to Europe. He sent me to Jerusalem and then the new assignment would go to Europe, to the north, to the south, the east and the west, to the high points and would blow the shofar and make declarations and this was like we were all, yes, let's go. We got her to Donegal and Faith walked up 
Donner herself, she was in her late 60s, so she, she was fit as a fiddle, she was fitter than me, and uh, made those declarations. And then Kathy arrived and was say, we'd done tours, we'd done Donegal, we'd done different points in Ul Ulster and Ireland, and made these declarations. But the thing that really was a game changer for us was Kathy, the girl Kathy, she actually bought a show, well, she, keeps, she bought a show far in Jerusalem that was to be used, but when she was staying, we actually let her stay with us. And when she was staying with us, God told her to give me the shofar, and I had to take over this and blow the shofar and high points and stuff. So that was kind of new to me, and the shofar came with us in 2018. There's plenty of pictures, if you look back, of people having to go with the shofar. But the thing Kathy left for us was, Kathy left us a few raggy, raggedy CDs that she had brought with her, but the worship on those CDs was something... It was something else. It was a it was a deeper than I had ever we had ever heard. We didn't really get it, but as soon as as soon as we listened to it, it literally changed our lives. It took us into realms we never knew. Um, and actually, one of the guys who made the CD later on when we done burn was with us leading the worship at the burn. Um, Keith Luger. But uh, no, those those CDs changed our whole outlook. Our whole the way we saw worship. You know. Worship was always good and nice to sing a song and it makes you feel good sometimes. But to go into the presence of the God, to go into the realms of God, it, 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 it can change your life. And when you've tasted of that, you can't go back. I was saying this to, again, we were, we were discussing it the other night, weren't we? Um, once you go in, you can't go back. Now, we always then had a vision. We had a heart for Israel. We had a heart for the Jewish people, for biblical Hebrew, for learning names and seasons and stuff. And that took us into... Uh, friendships around the world via Facebook groups and stuff but there was one woman that we sort of connected with in South Africa and we'd been discussed the stuff about uh, Israel and, and the Hebrew root stuff but she then was saying oh you're into, she discussed worship and we really, yeah we really have a heart and she says there's a guy Steve in England you have to speak to and we were like okay, how are we going to speak to Steve you know but, but anyway this guy Steve Lincoln came to us um from Burn 24-7. He literally had just come into the UK from America. Um, so Burn 24-7 is a global worship movement. Uh, well, uh, most people haven't heard of Burn. Um, a lot of people have heard of Sean Foyt, who hated Burn, because he's been seeing tr America transformed, literally state by state, pe drug addicts, and uh, <laughs> everything just coming and getting thrown themselves in the altar. They're just going to state capitals and releasing God and releasing the sound and seeing revival. They are, there is a revival happening in America. Don't believe mainstream media, America has, is seeing a revival. But um, so this guy, Steve, comes to us. Um, this was in 2008. And we always had a heart for worship. We had done things like worship events and gatherings, but Steve brought, basically brought the burn to Northern Ireland. We started off burn 15 years ago. Um, we, at that time, we had been going through this whole, like you guys, Hebrew roots and feasts and times and seasons and observing Friday night, Saturday, you know, and stuff. We weren't in a church at that time. We, were, we weren't in a church, and we hadn't really had any connections at that time with anyone. But here Steve comes, and, and we, we met with a few church leaders we knew in different elums and stuff. Amazing men of God doing some amazing things and still are. But um, it kind of was like, oh, that's a great idea, but, you know, we're doing this and we're doing that. But so, Steve, it came to start, and we actually done our very first burn on the 11th of July, for anyone who knows, bonfire night, you know. So we'll do a burn, on. that's what we thought. We thought we we're going to do a burn on, on bonfire night. So <laughs> we actually had it in Carried Off Elam, because we had very good friends there and we'd been involved in, in Carried Off at the time. And uh, so we had Steve was speaking, burn vision, there was someone from America leading the worship, and I shared this the other night with Michelle, you know, I was on my face on the floor for two hours, and I just had the same overwhelming feeling, that, are we ready for this? Is this land ready for this? And I felt no. I think I shared this with someone recently. I, I, I honestly was saying, I don't think we're ready for this, because the glory, the level and the weight of the glory, and I know what we're like in Northern Ireland. People are like, you know, very closed off, very... Uh, you know, <laughs> and they're worried about things, but God was ready to move. So, as 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 always happens with God, He gets He gets to decide, not me. Thankfully, so we set off that first 
the first, that was, our, that was like a burn introduction, so our first full burn was 24 hours. <laughs> 24 hours worship and prayer, non-stop. We had ourselves, and I don't think we had anyone else at that time who could lead a worship slot. We, done, we generally pitched it as you do an hour, half an hour, an hour, maybe two hours of a, a slot, as we call it, worship slots. And you just go, and we were like, we're, we were just immediately thinking, we don't, we don't have connections here, but God, God had the right people. We had our 24-hour burn, and we had many more 24-hour burns. So basically, once a month, we done a burn, and the burn 24-7 says it's based on the, um, on the scriptures when Jesus, after the resurrection, he's walking with the two men. And, there's, and they're talking with Jesus, and it's not till he leaves they go, did our spirits not burn within us? You know, and they realize, they got a revelation of who he was. They were burning within, and I know everyone's probably experienced that themselves when the Holy Spirit comes within, and it's just like the presence of God's thick. So it's, that's something we'll have to explain, because we've had people going, burn? Does that mean Turner burn? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah, so we, we decided to kick off our burns t- say between six and 24, well we've done, I think we've done 50 hours once as well, and we were actually, during lockdown, the the UK Wide Burn Network, we done an online thing, and we done a whole week, literally non-stop a full week, which was powerful, and at that time, most people were just in the house watching things, I think with 60,000 views of, on the, over the whole thing, but um, it's all for one thing, and that started off that we wanted to see, we wanted to see people ignited for God's glory. We wanted people to have what we call, and they call it now a safe space, it's a very different meaning. We wanted to create a space for those people to come in, to encounter God in their own way. There was no rush, there was no agenda at all. So for instance, on that first burn, a lot of the people when they arrived to do their slots, we had never met them and they had never met us at all. So we were like, are you such and such? And we're like, yeah, okay, okay. So just hook up. What do you want to do? You worship the Lord. We call it vertical worship, where no matter what's happening in the room, you're worshiping the Lord. And if, people are, if people are hungry, they'll join in. If they're not, they'll do whatever. Now, we built some amazing friends through this. Um, some of the guys were, were worship leaders in their churches, but I would say that overwhelmingly, most people had either been the worship leader and their church had maybe moved them on or they hadn't been given opportunities or they were maybe finding themselves in it and they'd never been given opportunities in their church. And it was amazing to just watch people who had hunger for God. They weren't musically gifted, maybe. Some of them were because we had some very well-known worship leaders come, but some of them had never... I always remember Matthew, a young lad. His dad was in a band who'd done the worship. But after one of the sets one night, when, or after one of the burn, everybody was having tea and stuff. And this young, he was 14, and his wee friend, they got up and started sort of playing, and, and they were practicing a few songs. And I said, you know, do you want to do, do a slot next time, next month? And they were like, oh, no, 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 we just, we're just... I says, look, I'm putting you in for a slot next month. So uh, get practicing now. It was it was two months before they did lead the slot, but they were it was anointed. It was messy, which sometimes that can be the case. It can be messy, but they find them they find themselves in worship, and they are leading worship in one of the big churches in Belfast. Um, I think Matthew's still there, but that is that was the case in many in many places where one one band had a guy with them who played guitar but didn't play in the band. And I found out he played guitar. Now he's leading worship. He's led worship in three quite big churches. And they're having, like where they have went now, they're having a bit of a revival, to be quite honest. There's a few churches that sprung up, you know, and there's things happening. But all this is because nothing to do with us. I am a simple person. <laughs> I like to keep things simple. It makes life easier. But um, none, none of it, not, nothing to do with us. But for the glory of God. And I believe that if you create a space, like what's happening here, if you create a space and let God do, do his will, you seek him and you have hungry people, there will, be, there will be a revival, there will be a fire. I believe hunger is the key. Hunger is the key. And that's what we've seen. So we, we had, when we started Burn in the UK 15 years ago, there was us. So Belfast was, Belfast, Durham, and Bradford were the three founding burns in the UK. 
Um, we had been the longest running one because they had they had sort of stopped and started. So at one point we were the longest run burn in the UK. Um, but now I think there was uh, at the last there was like 35 or 40 in the UK. There's literally so many around the world. They're in Iran. They're in uh, North Korea. Everywhere. Sean himself went in the North Korea. What is it? Michelle, tell me something. Yes. So that's what I was going to say too. When we created that. Uh, presence by Allah and the Spirit to come. We've seen many things happen in, the, in those burn meetings. We had people encountering God and having that transformation of God as someone I've read about to God, I know God now. I've felt the presence of God. I've seen God move. We had miraculous healings just in the worship. You know, God inhabits the praises of his people. And as I was praying, I think last night, um, when, when God shows up, things change. When God shows up, there is deliverance, there is healings, there is people set free, there's bondage broken. We have seen a few of the things, examples. There was a, a, a woman who, who came with her husband to the burns every month, but she had severe um, weakness and, and uh, she literally had, the, he helped her in and she got her bed out, a, a fold up bed and her sleeping bag and she lay down and you'd have thought she was asleep the whole time. And there was one time she was lying on the sofa. It was actually on Belfast, on uh, in East Belfast, in a very well-known church. And we were in one of the cafes, and she was lying across the sofa. And the spirit of God was so powerful. And Michelle was actually walking behind her, praying. And the next minute, she jumped up, and she started dancing all around and around and around. And it was, we were all just like, because it was one of those things that, Everybody knew her from that by then, you know, she just lay down and, and she just sat there. But, you know, she was sick in her heart and she's, her and her husband are an amazing couple of God. Her husband was very important to us at the burn. He supported us. He was very well known in his time and when he led the worship in his church, but he had sort of been, he hadn't been leading in, in a while, but, uh, Peter, but it was a blessing to see God move. Um, we've also had um, the time in worship a woman who couldn't move her arm, for, her, her shoulder was locked for probably, I think it had been locked for like three years. And uh, we'd been praying for her and praying for her during the worship. And then we actually had stopped praying for her. And uh, a guy spoke to me about something to do with it, went back and prayed with her. It was a key, he got a key. Literally God had dropped the key to say something to her. And literally it was about unforgiveness, I believe. And literally... I just remember turning around because he'd said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. If God showed me this, is that okay? Yes, go and pray." He went over, and I was as soon as I turned around, she was standing doing this here, jumping up and down, waving her arms. You know, complete healing. Hallelujah! So good, so good, so good. We thank you, Lord, for your healing power. I, I just, I, I just feel the Holy Spirit's put upon my heart now that he, He's here and He wants to heal you right now. Anyone who needs a healing touch to believe that the Holy Spirit is here now and he's willing to touch you and heal you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just want to touch on the whole thing. The ethos of the burn is based on Amos 9-11, about rebuilding the tabernacle of David, which has fallen in the end times. Um, most people have heard about the tabernacle of Moses when the children of Israel walked in the de desert and had the tabernacle and, and they moved the line around. Most, I would like to hope most people have heard of the tabernacle of David where he, was, he turned it into a worship and the presence of God came and they danced and danced and danced and there was thousands of musicians and whilst the, um, the presence of God was with them. I just wanted to read, and I don't know if I'll read it all, I don't want to take up too much time, but it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of the cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. This is Exodus 33. Sorry, I should have said that. And the people saw the pillar of the cloud standing at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose and worshipped, each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he would return to the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. The promise of God's presence now. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. 
Yet you have said, I will know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you, and that I may find your grace in your sight. And consider that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. That's what we're talking about, revive, rest. And then he said to him, if your presence, Moses says to God, if your presence doesn't go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how then will it be known that you, your people and I have found your grace in your sight, except you go with us? So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people of the earth on the face of the earth. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, Moses says, please show me your glory. Um, what I would say is, in relation to that is, we know the presence of God is with us. Uh, the verse that I have highlighted to read that was mentioned earlier, Michelle actually mentioned it, was about how the veil was torn in two. And look, when Jesus died on the cross in Luke 23, now it was about the sixth hour and there was darkness all over the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathes his last. You know, something I always talk about is, is the restoration of the restoration of the relationship between God and man. When we think of Eden and we see God walked in the garden with Eden, or of Eden with Adam, and they talk just as face face to face, just as Moses here is talking to God face to face in the tabernacle. But yet the tabernacle had that inner sanctuary that only the one could go into, one high priest. But Jesus died here to tore and tore that in two because this is the show we have the authority to be with our Lord once again, just as Adam walked with God, we have that authority now. And I would encourage anyone to to ask God to show me your glory, just as Moses did. At that time, the restoration hadn't happened. Jesus hadn't died, and and that reconnection hadn't been made, but it was coming. Um, and I'm just sorry, I'm just looking through my notes here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was coming, but we now can walk in that in that, uh, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. We've been here this morning. I've seen it here many times where people are meeting with God face to face. Now, God isn't the distant, distant God that we can only read about like some historical figure. He's here for you for now. And I pray as this this place, this is a well, I see it as a well. And Vita was saying about um, the water was rising this morning. And just as he was saying that in prayer, the water is rising, you know, it's like we're drawn from a well here. I believe God has opened up a well here, and I know there's been, there's been a lot of stuff happened on this site, and as Phil was saying, this is where God wants you guys to be. I believe there is a well here, and, and I believe we're going to see great and mighty things in revival for this place. So I'm not really sure <laughs> where I went with this, but I just wanted to share the vision of Burn. It is a revive. When you're in the presence of God, you are totally revived. I believe that. God refills you, reconnects you. Sometimes you need to take that time away to just to reset your compass, as it were, to see right. So where where are we going now? And we ourselves are in a season that at the minute where we feel we're having to draw back to say, God, what are you going to do? Where are you going to? Where are we going to be? And I would encourage you to do that as much as you can. It is not wasted time. That's something the Spirit's put on me to say. We have many times when we were doing burn, but so many people say, why would you waste 20, what, what's, that's a waste of time. You're just going to worship God. It is not a waste of time because when you draw back, as you were saying last night, sometimes you have to draw back to move forward to realize what God's going to do because ultimately it's, our instruction needs to come from him. But yeah, just, I'll just leave it there. If there's anything else you need to say, <laughs> you want to ask him? Do you want to say anything?